Let me go change my whole fit, bro. <laughs> this nigga, he trying so hard. Having a princess on the team, bro. Should've bought him a dress for Christmas. I'm gonna be cheesing this whole time, bro. I'm like a fan. Hi guys, my name is Dylan from DeJesus Custom Footwear and I'm doing an interview today with Infinite Figures. My name is Aaron. Uh, I'm a shoe customizer too. I'm working with Infinite Figures. We were looking for interviews to do and I was like, okay, DeJesus is like a, like a goat in the custom game. So I wanna see if like, he'll be able to do this. And I'm Jeffrey. I do like, video and editing. So like, I was very interested in the more YouTube side of what you do. Thank you so much for taking the time out to do an interview with us, Mr. DeJesus. We're big fans of you and all you do. Great. He's so great. The first question we have for you is, how did all this get started? Uh, 10 years ago now, I was a uh, sophomore in college. I went to school for architecture here in Chicago. And uh, I had been collecting shoes for some time and I was taking some painting classes at the time. Saw some people online were painting shoes and I had never even seen or heard of that before. But what was primarily going on back then is people were sort of painting shoes, some of the more rare colorways. Like for example, back then, this was when the South Beach LeBron 8s released and being a broke college student, I sure as shit couldn't afford those. So I decided to go ahead, uh, ran to Michael's, bought the cheapest acrylic paint I could find, uh, tried to find a teal that would match and painted up a pair of uh, Jordan 6s to match those. I actually saw the more recent video where you did those over again for a design for some cleats you had. Oh yeah, and sweet, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that also brings us to the next thing. Uh, tell us about how you picked up clients and were able to build like a clientele that's like you have now. Yeah, so um, this is in uh, like 2011, 2012, Facebook and Facebook groups were, were more popular. And so I was just in a bunch of different sneaker sort of groups on Facebook because I was also into just buying and reselling at the time. So I would really primarily just post my work in there. And this is kind of really before Instagram was was all that popular. It was definitely starting more and more people were, were starting to use that platform. But Facebook was still a really big deal back then. So it was kind of just, you know, I, I got lucky in, in the sense that it was a little bit easier to, to maybe grow uh, during that time as far as, you know, just organic growth on social media and just uh, sort of hopped on the train at the right time per se and just really took off from there. We see the names that you've been able to work with recently. Out of all those projects you've done, which one would you say would be your favorite out of all the people you've had to work with or your favorite design to do? But something that always comes to me is like, maybe when was I the most nervous to meet somebody? And the most nervous I ever was, was the first time I got to, to work with a Bears player. And this was uh, 2016. It was with Jeremy Langford. He was the running back at the time. And uh, I had a studio in downtown Chicago that was only a few blocks away from Soldier Field where the Bears play. And uh, he actually came to my studio, dropped off some cleats, came back to pick them up on like Friday when they had a, a Sunday game. And it was for uh, week one of the season, so opening game. And I just remember I had worked with you know different artists and athletes before, but actually having somebody come to my studio and it being for my hometown team, just growing up as a Bears fan, that was far and away the most nervous I ever was to actually uh, deliver a pair of shoes. So that one will definitely always resonate with me. Great. He's so great. Um, so my question is, right, so where do you get like your inspirations from? Yeah, I think that I really have a fascination with uh, um, tattoo art. And it's funny enough because I'm a tattoo virgin. I don't even have any tattoos, but I've always been really fascinated with a, a tattoo show called Ink Master, something I, I reference all the time and I highly recommend people check out if they haven't before, but it's a essentially like a, a uh, elimination show where every week, you know, there might be a different challenge of the week, whether it's, you know, color this week or contrast, you have to be able to handle anything that comes your way. So I sort of try to strive for that within my artistry also in that I want to be able to handle any theme that comes my way, whether it's going to be a portrait piece or something, you know, a little bit more on the simple end, but I want to be able to throw myself into that world and, and hopefully really deliver something that, um, uh, you know, the client really enjoys and really connects with them. So I sort of, you know, strive to be really wide ranging as an artist, but still, you know, I like my work to be, you know, pretty detailed, very textured and 
I just don't think it very often falls on the simpler end. I'd like it to be something that, you know, is is better on a second viewing, something that you can, you know, start to really enjoy the longer you look at it and start to notice more and more of the details. So I think that that's sort of the best way to describe uh, my work. The same way that you kind of uh, challenge yourself with these different ideas, do you apply that to your YouTube channel? You do a lot of different things and a lot of different videos. I do, yeah, yeah. Thank you for noticing that. I'm, I'm not sure I've ever been complimented on that before, but that's that's uh, that's really cool. But I am, I, I kind of, I'm not sure if get bored easily is the best term, but I, I, I genuinely am excited by just testing new things. So I've created a bunch of new series sort of on YouTube where, you know, sometimes I might have, you know, I've tried to create, I've tried to create almost like game shows on the YouTube page where maybe I'm like guessing the price of custom shoes on the internet. I've tried to create, uh, you know, maybe some product reviews where I'm reviewing new products out on the market and maybe testing them up against some old products. I've tried to create, um, you know, series where I'm critiquing other artists work and I've tried to create different series of just showing long form of current projects that I'm working on. So yeah, I think that I, I definitely like to, to test a lot of different things and I'm somebody who I think that if anybody's gonna like join YouTube and wants to do it, I think that the first thing you should do is watch a lot of YouTube and see what's working and see what's, not only what's working, but see what's not working. You know, there's a reason that Mr. Beast is Mr. Beast, you know what I mean? Because literally anybody can watch that and, and kind of get a kick out of it, you know what I mean? And there's a reason that, you know, everybody can, can have like a favorite YouTuber and it's because it's somebody that you just connect with and you know their personality sort of shines through and in a weird way you sort of feel like you get to know them over time the more time you spend with them and a lot of people have said that to me over the years i've been on youtube uh coming up now on almost like three years very much in like a, a full-time capacity where we're probably approaching 250 to 300 videos with i mean you know that's that's a long time and a lot of hours along with a lot of live stream q a stuff in between so in a weird way people have spent uh a lot of time with me and in hearing my view on a lot of different things and that's that's kind of how i feel about about a lot of the customizers in the game especially you who would you say is your favorite youtuber to draw ideas from and, all, and things of that nature. That the, the person that I connect mo uh, most with on YouTube, who I've drawn a lot of inspiration from, isn't necessarily a customizer, but it's a photographer and videographer by the name of Peter McKinnon. And um, he's up in uh, Canada, and he just is one of the most fascinating and intelligent people that I've just ever come across. And I've learned so much from him in terms of photography, videography, video editing, product photography, and he's just a genuinely like funny dude. And like I sort of mentioned earlier, in a, in a very weird way, I almost feel like I know him because of how much time I've spent watching his videos. But when it comes to, you know, sneaker customizers, I think that there's, you know, some of the OGs that have been doing it for years, Sophie, Serato, you know, I've definitely drawn inspiration from, from their videos and seen, okay, what is it that made these people blow up on YouTube? You know, which of their videos worked, which of their videos didn't work, what worked for them in terms of titles, in terms of thumbnails, in terms of, you know, video series, what's the best way to to sort of go about trying to do this on my own. When we see uh, your workshop behind you, and uh, I love that to see that, you know, you always got a place in the crib where, you know, you can get creative as well. So what would be your words to those people who are trying to attain doing what they love full time you really have to love it if you're going to turn it into a, a, a full-time career you're going to need to miss out on a lot of things and, and pass on a lot of opportunities and just sort of give it your all and it's not it's not linear okay so where you start on day day one it's not just going to be ramping up over time you're going to have ups and downs it's going to be a roller coaster but you only get hurt on a roller coaster if you jump off you know so you need to be willing to withstand those ups and downs and you know the trials and tribulations you're going to go through in business you need to be willing to take risk and test new things and be willing to accept failure and that's a good thing because you don't want to just live in you know if you if you just live in your comfort zone the whole time if you're never stepping out of there 
you're never going to be able to reach new heights for yeah as far as advice for for anybody you know just just trying to make it just be willing to fail and and sort of you know don't really worry too much about what other people are saying along the way a lot of people are going to think you're crazy anytime you're you're trying something that that hasn't been done before i mean you know 10 years ago when i told my parents i was uh, dropping out of college to paint shoes full time when that was definitely i mean you could still argue that it's not today you know necessarily a mainstream thing but it sounded uh, a whole heck of a lot crazier 10 years ago than it does now and going back a little bit how did you come up with the idea to take your customization onto YouTube? I'm, I'm genuinely a fan of YouTube, something that I've always just sort of enjoyed watching, whether it was, you know, I mean, years back, you were just sort of watching goofy cat videos on YouTube and, you know, like jackass compilations and stuff. Uh, you know, probably about four years ago, I remember saying, you know, feeling a little bit stagnant with, um, where we were, it didn't feel like we were growing much uh, anymore as a business, especially kind of like on social media. It didn't really feel like our Instagram was growing no matter what we were doing. It didn't really feel like our our Facebook was growing. It's not like our business was in a major decline, but it just felt like in terms of social media, which I know is very important, it didn't really feel like we were growing anymore. So we just sort of started to test out kind of like video on Instagram, not necessarily YouTube videos, but just playing around with the with the video format since I mean essentially it was just a photo platform for years so we started testing out video and then I said you know what we're we're sort of doing these cool projects constantly whether it's you know cleats for football players or I remember our first video on our page is actually we made shoes for Gary V because we knew he was coming to Chicago and we were hoping to actually link up with him we weren't able to but we sent him out to New York to him but anyways I knew we were doing these cool projects and I said you know what I think that people might watch this. This it, it sounds cool to me. I would watch it if I if I saw a video that said custom shoes for Gary V and whatnot. So um, I just went ahead and said, you know what? Let's go ahead and, and see if anybody's interested in seeing, you know, a little bit more behind the scenes of these projects here. And I quickly realized people had questions about how to do things. So I didn't necessarily go onto YouTube with the intention of teaching or doing tutorials. It's just so that once we started posting videos, a lot of the comments were, and a lot of the engagement and interaction was, well, how are you doing this? What are the pro- products that you're using? How did you do this? You know, What are the steps to accomplish X, Y, and Z? And we said, you know what? People are asking about that. Why don't we go ahead and try to make some videos on that and see how that does? And uh, you know, we, we quickly saw that tutorials were something that would you know, really help our page grow. And, and for doing that for almost 10 years now, where do you see yourself in the future? Uh, I've had a lot of different ideas on, on where it could go in five years, but where my heart really is now is within doing uh, in-person courses. So I would really love to expand that. We announced our first one right before the whole pandemic hit. And, um, you know, so it's un- unfortunate that just, you know, in-person gatherings have become a lot harder to, you know, just be a normal thing but you know hopefully soon that's that's definitely our goal for uh you know 2022 we hope to have them sort of quarterly so maybe three to four times a year here in chicago and that's something that i i'd really love to build and expand on and who knows maybe as that grows maybe then i can have sort of an in-person you know shop or just space for that and uh that's that's where i'd really love to see it grow now Is there something that you want to try that you haven't been able to yet? Like any projects you hope to put in the works? Yeah, last year I set one of my goals for 2021 as learning how to sew and sort of, you know, reconstruct a shoe. And I, uh, you know, bought a sewing machine. I did all of this stuff. I got everything ready. And I said, at some point, I'm going to try to take like a month off of, you know, my, my typical workflow and just dedicate a whole month to trying to learn this new craft and uh, unfortunately that month just never came so I haven't gotten around to that but that is still something that I'm very interested in and especially trying to find a way to sort of combine the two whereas you know typically you might see there's a ton of great recon artists out there but I think it'd be really cool to do a combination of both reconning a shoe and also doing some painting so if you could have some really high-end painting along with some really high-end maybe exotic skins on a shoe I think that that could, you know, create something really, really cool. Any last words that you want to say to the people before you go? 
no, I really appreciate it, fellas. Thanks for having me on. You know, if there's uh, if there's anything that I could do to 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 help anybody along the way, you know, whether they're just trying to get started, whether they feel like they've hit a bump in the road, um, you know, that's the thing that sort of excites me the most nowadays. Really, just trying to help people, whether it's get started or or take themselves to that next level in the sneaker customizing journey. Because, you know, thankfully I've already I, I've I've gone through a ton of trial and error, and hopefully I can. I think that a, a really great teacher can can help people avoid some of the mistakes that they made along the way. And that's something that I uh, definitely love doing nowadays. So if anybody has any questions or anything, uh, I'm more than glad to, to try to help out. You can, you can find him on Instagram, DM him. He's always responding to anybody who needs help. Thank you so much, Mr. Hayes, Hayes for, coming. for coming on, man. Absolutely. Appreciate you fellas for having me on. And I, uh, you know, I'd definitely be glad to, uh, to uh to come back i love mm -hmm. that man that was good that was a good interview you should have asked him if he would adopt you bro fun fact um uh, i've been playing shoes for like almost a year now guys so definitely go uh, your mom's follow. been paying shoes for over a year now what are you talking about are we trying to make a joke it wasn't a joke it wasn't, a joke. Bad, it wasn't supposed to be a joke it's supposed to be good at jokes bro I'm a video editor, so you know what I'm saying? I kind of pick up on, on certain things. Yo, my name is Aaron, and I'm the photographer for the Infinite Figures. Like, I'm really a professional. I, I could professionally you. knock you out, like Tyrone Whitney. I you promise know, you, you wouldn't. If we had a boxing match, who do you think is going to win? Me or you? You even have boxing gloves, Jeff? Huh? That's like your dad? What's wrong with you, man? What are you talking about? What happened? Um, nah, he's not my dad. He's, um, he's like a goat in the custom game.